Yes, getting the balance right. We live between worlds. So many... Oops, that's me. <laughs> we live between various worlds. And we believe in the creation of the visible and the invisible. That's interesting. And today we are particularly tuned in to the angels. We celebrate the angels, the archangels. Michael, Gabriel and Raphael. So I know in, in Mexico, in Sp Spanish culture, Raphael is a very common name. And Gabriel is quite common in English and Michael, of course, is incredibly common. So much so that once <laughs> a companion seminarian, when I arrived back to the States from Germany to work there, he was my, my, we were working together as a team. And he said he was so happy to have an Irish name, Michael. <laughs> and I said, well, that's actually Hebrew. <laughs> and he was boasting about all the Irish names in his family and basically none of them were Irish. <laughs> but we have the idea that since Michael is, is so common in our place that Michael is a local name. And it has become, but it's actually made up of, of three Hebrew words. Me means who, Ke, like, Mikael, God, who is like God. And then Gabriel means the strength of God, Gabriel. And then Raphael means the healing of God. God is healer. And starting today's course, a uh, course, pilgrimage, pilgrimage of, with a focus on healing, especially inner healing, by God's grace, then Raphael is a, is a nice, a nice uh, providential presence today in that he healed the blindness of of Tobit, right? Or Tobias, which of the two was it? Help me, it's early here in the morning. It's after 6.30, okay? So, 6.45. So, well, actually, I did all this walking down here already, so I'm on my way back. But I just came here because of the, the bushes and the cover. You can see the cloud delay the sunrise this morning. So it's interesting, in our world today, we have two extreme attitudes about angels. You have the people who say they don't exist. That's all a figment of the imagination. And then you have the other people that are head over heels into angels and demons and all kinds of spirits. And basically, they're out of balance. They're living in a, in a very extreme angel awareness. I noticed something this morning I hadn't ever noticed before. You see all these flowers, these, that are, these tall plants that are here with this whitish effect in the distance. And we found one of them yesterday. I was, what's going on here? Okay. That's interesting, we could even see a bee at that distance up there. It's about 60 yards from here, probably, or 40 yards. So these are beautiful, beautiful flowers and you're up close. We won't see them now, but there's tons of them all along this entire walk this morning. And I'd never noticed them before. But having noticed one yesterday, it really caught my eye this morning, how many of them there are here. So let's say those flowers don't exist or trees don't exist. Well, that's one approach, you know. We can deny their existence. 
So there are people who deny, like, I was never in Australia, so I can say Australia doesn't exist, but I'm sorry for all the participants from Australia, you know, because you know Australia exists. And my denial won't affect your existence and Australia's existence. But I take it, you know, I had to take it on faith, really, my whole life that Australia exists. Because I was never there to check it out. But I trusted the people who told me, the teachers. We drew maps of Australia and the towns, the major towns. And besides, we had a cousin, uncle of my father, who was actually in Brisbane. He was vicar general of the diocese there. And when we were little children, he would come to visit about every two years with his sister. And they were already in their 80s, so we're talking about the early 60s. So that was another reason to believe Australia exists, because he worked there. He lived there, most of his ministry as a priest. So do angels exist, you know? And then you have people like, you just see a certain cloud and they say, oh, that's an angel. Or something special happens, oh, that's an angel. I'm not going to be the arbitrator of these statements, but it's interesting to see these two very um, opposite ends of the spectrum regarding angels. I invite you to read two links today, the readings, and you'll see readings that go back as far as Jacob, Jacob's ladder, in the gospel reference, in Jesus' reply to Nathanael, which also you'll see there the book of Daniel, with its abundant treatment of angels, and you'll also see a psalm mentioning the angels, and there's more than one. And actually, if we go back, we have Abraham with the three mysterious visitors at the oak tree in Mamre. So, really, the whole Bible, and there's also reading from the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and uh, there Michael is particularly treated in his standing up for God in the heavenly conflict over God and his divinity. It's very beyond our reach. But just by saying these few points, I'm making a bigger point that for the scripture, the angels do exist and they're real. They're part of God's creation. He made the world, the visible world and the invisible world, heaven and earth. And we're in there. And we're like in between the two worlds in a way because we're also spiritual beings, but not just spirit. We're also body. And that's an opportunity just to address another thing. You know, when a little child dies, it's very sad for family. And words of consolation are often given, oh, your child is a little angel in heaven. Well, your child will never be an angel in heaven. Your child will be a human being in heaven. With body and soul and the resurrection of the dead. So... Um, angels are angels and human beings are human beings. Two very different orders of creation. And one of the most basic facts about the angels then is that they're creatures of God. Like, look, Just look at the, all the flowers we see in a day here. All the plants, all the birds, all the clouds, all the b mountains. I mean, there's such an immense variety of creation, an abundance of creation. So who are we to say that God can create an incredibly full heavenly world? Impossible to say that. At least not wise, because how can we outrule it? Hey, I just saw another little thing here. I'm not sure what it is. But look at this, another piece adding to variety. You see these little black things? I'm not sure they're on this plant. Maybe they're a fruit, maybe somebody knows. Maybe they're edible, but I'm not going to try now. I don't know. But you know, the, the, the amazing amount of, of fruits, of, of experiences, of 
every color, every shape. It's just amazing the amount of the variety, the diversity of the abundance of creation. So you have all that fruit up there. We got, we got closer to these guys before. So then, can you say that God can't make angels, that God can't create angels, that that's impossible for God to do? Okay, well, let's leave that now <clears throat> and move on. So then, our, the, the scriptures and the teaching of God's people always has taught about angels in a balanced way. From our faith perspective, the angels exist and the angels serve God. They glorify God. They don't have the division in them that we have because they're purely spiritual beings and we have we're body and soul. We have so many different aspects to us, but particularly that we have a material dimension and a spiritual dimension and angels are pure spirits. And sometimes God sends them as messengers to us and in that's kind of a job they get to do. And as a messenger, then their word in Greek for a messenger is an angelos. And so an angelos is a messenger. So then they're called angels frequently because they're messengers to us. And under that aspect, they're really an expression of God's love and care for us. And how many times we see that they come to Abraham to announce that he would have a child, that his fidelity in waiting for God's fulfillment uh, is not in vain, that God is, is close to him. So we see right up to Gabriel coming to Mary for the announcement of Jesus, you know, before that for John the Baptist. And we see Tobias and Tobit in problems, and there God comes along through his angels and, and heals and guides. And that's our faith, that we live in that context. And actually in the temptations in the, in the desert, the devil uses the Psalms to push Jesus to jump from the Temple Mount. He said, the angels will take you up in their arms. It's a quote from one of the Psalms. So, that's, um, it's like a totally taken for granted fact. And it's not just a cold fact like there's 14 stones in this square meter, no. It's about, this stone is like two tons weight, no. The fact of the angels is it's an expression of God's love and care for us. And sometimes we're overwhelmed by the conflicts and the battles of life, of culture, of society, even on our own heart. And there's a wonderful point that Paul makes, and he says that we're not just in an earthly conflict. We're actually in an earthly and celestial conflict. The contours of our battles are deeply spiritual. This is just a water pump here, guys. This system is taking saline water, skirting the Sea of Galilee. At the comes up on the, on the ground, off of the ground north of the Sea of Galilee. And if it were allowed into the lake, it would cause a whole change in the nature of the lake. And we, this lake wants to be kept as a freshwater lake. So that's why all this, this structure was built here to detour the water to the south of the lake. And it has a very high salt content. So that pump is helping to move it along, probably. Well, anyway, um, this is a very consoling fact that the angels are here for our good. They're here to help us and we can call on them. And we actually worship with the angels. The highest point of the Eucharistic celebration is becoming aware of the presence of the angels because our worship is heavenly liturgy, like the Eastern Christians say. And so we enter into the worship of the angels before God. So the angels are very close to us. And on the 2nd of October, we'll have the Feast of the Guardian Angels. And I put in a link for you uh, on the angels uh, so that you can read a very succinct statement 
very clear uh, and very accessible statement about the angels and there are lots of scriptural references as well so you can indulge your soul's delight in the teaching about the angels the teaching that the church that the our faith uh, professes and then people today also let's let's uh, uh, you're invited you know uh, to the to the pilgrimage of healing walking with Jesus the healer through the sides of the Holy Land and starting today and Kathleen is waiting for you at 3 30 p.m. And you can sign up on the uh, web on the website magdala.org and be involved there are actually hundreds of thousands of people joining the pilgrimage especially in the Spanish language so if you have Spanish speaking friends make sure they know about it as well and it's going to be an incredible blessing already a lot of people are being blessed just in the preparatory moments and the preparatory announcements and there's great expectation I would suggest that we pray a lot and we can invoke the Archangel Raphael who was on a mission of healing God's healing for this pilgrimage today so people I think it's time to say goodbye thank you very much for being here today and here you can see the Arbel way up there behind us in the clouds it's a, an absolutely beautiful morning I'm going to head over to Instagram now, people. So God bless you. See you later, alligators.